Um, so this is the, um, the talk, uh, the um, title of our paper. And small disclaimer, what I'm going to present to you is just another good old interview study. So we interviewed 14 people, security managers namely, um, and that's, that's the core of this research. Um, maybe, I mean, there's a lot of light, but I want to still want to try to ask you something. Who here in this room um, deems it important that your work, HCS work or usability work, um, goes back to the community, like that there is a real world impact? Is it important for you or are you more, or more on a theoretical side? So it's quite important, right? So that was the majority. Um, and this is also like at the core of this presentation and this research, because my partner, Uta, over there, my research partner, and myself, what really guides us through our PhD is this, let's say, big question. All those concepts that were researched in this community in the last 20 years, do they sustain in organizations? Like, do they know that they, that, uh, that they should use password managers, that they should consider usability? And um, so most of you would agree with me. I, um, I just saw that usable security is an applied science. It is important that we have a real world impact. And um, our research is especially around organizations and employees. And um, in this research, we wanted to look how security managers, namely um, um, chief information security officers, so at the very top, how they or do they even care about usable security or the security friction that um, measures could cause? And what we did, we just interviewed some of them, like seven CISOs and seven security um, consultants who consult those CISOs. And you see, you see the title of the slide, right? All you need to know on one slide. So there uh, will be no surprises later. This really is the one slide, and I will deep dive into some aspects, but these are already the results, the core results. Um, well, they all said it's so important. Yes, we really have to consider this, but no one of them ever did it in practice. So they, they really didn't know how to address the security friction problem, how to really implement usable security concepts, and to... Um, to uh, say it boldly, the security managers or CISOs, they are those responsible for the, for the rule sets. So they really should have the influence to um, um, change the password policies, to be more, more usable, to implement password managers, and so on. And yeah, what they actually are implementing, I'm, I'm coming back to this later. And um, we have some limitations, and the first is really a bad one. We have a mail-only sample. Uh, and when I present you the methodology, you'll see why this is the case. This is, this is really bad. Um, and luckily, in another study we did, this is not the case. And of course, it's a small sample. And future research should study further CISOs and security managers. OK, just for short, um, what is the, let's call it problem space or background? When I talk about security friction today, um, it really is everything security can do to prevent employees from conducting their primary work tasks. So they are paid for something, typically. And security, when it stacks up, if it's unusable or if the rules can't be followed, or there are just too many rules, employees um, f experience the security friction, which leads to reduced productivity, frustration. They might circumvent the security. They might even um, lose the will to innovate. So if you, for example, prevent developers from accessing the right tools they need, and they really have to ask for every tool, and there are a lot of tools developers need, um, then they really won't be the best they could, right? So this is the problem space when, or this is what uh, we mean when we talk about security friction in this context. And on the right side, I brought you a screenshot from a quite important paper, which was published last year, last year which is what, a study with chief information security officers. And I brought you this just to tell you that there's so many, so much research with uh, CISOs and security managers. It's really the, the body of knowledge is very, very small. It, the, this population is very under-researched, despite them having such a great influence how the, on how the complete uh, security landscape um, develops. So there is still a lot of space for probably you um, doing interviews with them or uh, fancy experiments. Okay, um, the two research questions guiding this specific uh, work of research is really how do those, those managers perceive security friction? And of course, I have to say, security friction also 
includes usable security aspects. But we did not, when we um, um, invited those security managers, we did not use those words because we thought they wouldn't know what, what the concepts behind it, but we, we asked around it, like about security friction. Okay, two remarks about the methodology. Um, first of all, how does it come that we only have males? Well, we went on LinkedIn. We um, looked in this German-speaking uh, community for, for CISOs first, and then we also had um, um, non-male uh, people, uh, and we would write them, but none of them replied. And then we had an initial male sample, and then those males, CISOs and consultants, they referred further um, interview partners, and they only referred other male partners. So this is how we ended up only with males. And um, the other thing I, wanted to say, uh, um, thing I wanted to say is the managers we interviewed, they were very senior. So they had like, on average, like I, I forgot the correct number, but like 18 years of experience or so, so quite a lot. Okay. Um, when I prepared this, uh, this talk today, and I, because the next slides will be the results, I was really thinking again, okay, what is the novelty I can present today? And I think it might be quite boring standing for itself what you're about to see on the next three slides. It's only interesting, and I think this is the case why the reviewers accepted this paper, in the context, because we, are really, we really went out there or we recruited people implementing security on highest levels in the organizations, the CISOs, and what, we, what, what I'm gonna to present to you is what they th think. And I, in my opinion, it's quite important to see that they really, they don't know anything about what we are talking about here today. This is at least our finding. And this is quite, has quite some implications for, um, for example, how we should approach our communications to them. So the next, uh, those three slides, first about the causes, you know, um, they were part of the research questions. They presented a lot of causes why security friction would occur. For example, they would say, well, there are those norms, and this is how it is, and I don't have the power to bend them. If, they, if the norms say we have to uh, change passwords every three months, then we're going to do it. And also, um, like whenever new security rules come in, it will uh, cause friction, but also a lack of resources to buy better security. So like I said, nothing outstanding, right? But it's what they said, this very special and uh, highly powerful community um, of security managers we interviewed. They also said something about the impact, they, the, what they feared most when we asked them about um, uh, what the impact on employees or the, organ or, or the organization could be, um, it's that they could circumvent the security rules they set out. This was really the primary thing, with, which then would, of course, um, reduce the security as well for the organization. And in the end, they also said that the, um, the economic su success of the whole organization could be in danger. And um, this is maybe my favorite slide. Um, we also asked them about how they would mitigate security friction. And what, most, what almost all of them told us is something like, I want to translate it to you right now. Well, yes, there is the security friction. Employees are frustrated, but if we tell them that security is important, they will understand that everything will be fine. <laughs> and of course, we disagree. So we have an opinion about this, and uh, the, the team who, who did this research, and well, in my opinion, that's really a bad approach. But this is so imminent, and also, there are a few of my co-authors sitting there. We also have another paper at USNIX where we did another study, but we found the same. They all said, they, they, we did also did, um, uh, we worked with CISOs there, and they all said, we just have to convince them that security is important. But they had actually no real clue how to really address um, security friction, that they were aware of that um, security friction exists. Better ideas uh, were like, yeah, we could, um, we could um, change security if it's, if it's too bad. But this was only one or two, well, one or two managers who said this. Okay, this was the very small results part. Of course, in the paper, it's quite long, so um, you, you should read it, I would say. Um, yeah, what can we learn from this? Um, first of all, maybe um, um, we had one 
question, one quantitative question, where we ask how important would you deem it that um, the that security friction or that uh, the impact on employees is considered when creating new measures in your organizations? And it was on a scale from zero to 10. And like four or so answered with 11 and no one below seven. So they all said, oh, it's so important. But they had no idea how to implement it in the end. And we, the, the primary reason we, we, we see there is because they're not trained to. They have a lot of certifications. They love certifications. They talk about it. Um, th those different uh, uh, certifications you can get as a security specialist. But usable security is no, not a part or security friction of any of those certifications. It's also not part of the norms, the security norms. And um, it's also hard to measure the, the impact security has. I mean, it's, it's quite easy to, and studies have done this, quite easy to measure um, the, how much time the usage of one tool really needs. Like, you can spend that much time on authentication a day or so. But those other aspects I, j I just showed you, like um, um, loss of the will to innovate, and so that's quite hard to measure. And uh, there we don't have insights. So our solutions, and let me say this, we, the reviewers we got, they were really constructive, um, so thanks for this. And, but the, what they also said, and I, I think I need to agree, that the solutions we present are like no-brainers. But I still think they are quite important. So we should deliver se uh, usable security training to um, uh, CISOs and other um, top-level security managers to start with. We should include um, usable security norms and regulations. And um, in Bochum, we love this concept of security champions, where you have in different teams in your organizations people who will like uh, be directional report friction to, to the security management. OK. Um, I see we, we, hopefully, we have some time for questions. Um, we are so many from Bochum, and also a lot of co authors from this paper are here. We have also a poster, so please, please, please approach us later in the poster session. Uh, and uh, don't hesitate to criticize what I just presented. And also, come and visit us in Bochum. Every person you see on this picture is an HCS researcher, so we, we're getting quite big in Bochum. And um, yeah, thank you so much.